Previously on Justice for the People with Judge Million. So it's October, November, and December that you're suing on, right? Correct. But you already have a $1,500 security deposit, correct? correct. That's good. Did yes. they damage anything when they left? Well, there was a, a KKK sign on the fence. Oh, let's talk about that. So what you describe as microaggressions in this email, tell me what you're referring to. Never let anybody see you sweat. So I was born in New York City and I lived there until I was eight years old. I realized that I was a much better talker than I was a listener. I don't know what to say, I just don't like what you're saying. Sorry, Your Honor. I ended up going to law school at Georgetown and I was a prosecutor for Janet Reno. I loved it because it was so raw. Were you cheating on her? Yeah, sure. Okay. All rise. Our show will be a mixture of education. I think you're misreading the law a little bit. And entertainment. <laughs> my main goal is justice and the law. That's been my legacy and the legacy I hope to continue into the future with the show. When did you first notice the spray painting on the fence? I was notified by my neighbor. Which neighbor notified you? The same, the same el lady. older lady who wants exactly. peace and doesn't want exactly. and is not that friendly and is mean maybe to kids or whatever? Yes. All right, so, and what did she say? She was calling me, uh, I can't remember the day, but she was really shocked seeing that. Okay, and, and then she tells felt you, like she hey. She has to tell me because they were gone. Nobody was living there anymore. So she called me and Did you she, think in your head that they might have done it in order to justify getting back the security? Oh, correct. Why did you think that? Yeah, you don't have any evidence of that, right? That's true. Okay. Your Honor, but, like, right. in, in the email it says, due to the ongoing discrimination and microaggression, discrimination is part of the KKK thing we are speaking about. Is it? We didn't elaborate and say KKK, but we... Okay, that's but wouldn't somebody who wakes up to that, wouldn't that be the first thing out of their mouths? I'm, I, I, let, let's talk about this, because I, I have to tell... Let's assume for a moment that you're going to change your testimony, both of your testimony, and tell me that that's what you were referring to on September 15th. Okay. Let's go with that. All right. All right? That's what you meant when you said microaggression. Okay, let's go with that. In order for you to break a lease, because you have a contractual obligation... What did he do wrong? Do you have any evidence that he sprayed that on there? No, of course not, right? You don't think for a moment he sprayed it. All right. So what would justify you breaking your lease? If someone can go ahead and spray a KKK on our fence, mm -hmm. who knows what they can do come breaking into our home? And I get you. I get exactly what you're saying. And doing something to us. And that's like, fine. And you, why would in I life, we night? have to make decisions. And sometimes those decisions cost us and not someone else. If you feel that the neighborhood is hostile and that the neighborhood has committed, a, somebody in that neighborhood committed a criminal mischief on that fence, mm -hmm. okay, and it's, it's super hostile and you don't want to live there, I wouldn't live there another second exactly. either. I got it. Okay. But... That's not all that is happening here. You want to be excused from having to pay the rent, which means he has to have broken some covenant that he owes you. What did he do wrong? Did you ever ask him after that? But um, he didn't give off any information on way to like help us deal with this situation. It was all Why so is he in a unique position dismissive. to give you it that? Was, it was just so dismissive. Like, oh, whatever. It was feel, I felt like a copy and paste email. I didn't feel like it, there was some heart poured into this at all for okay. all the numerous But lack of, of heart, okay, and that may be so. However, that doesn't give you a legal leg to stand on. You have a lease that compels you to pay rent until the end of the lease. If, would, the, would, would the lease or any money matter if I was dead? It wouldn't matter, right? Okay, no, so and that's why... To and that no, 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 hold on, stop right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So if you feel unsafe, then you move. Exactly, that's what yeah, we did. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Now you're being sued for the rent, and now what you need is something more than what you have. You are uncomfortable because the neighbors are rude, the neighbors, you feel that they're racist, and, they're, and, and somebody spray-painted KKK on there, and whoever spray-painted that is an insensitive racist. Of course. Okay, absolutely. Okay, all that may be true. Did you call the police? Yes. Oh, you did? Can I see the police report? Because I didn't see that. Um. Yep, here we go. Okay. And what did the police the tell you? Morning is when the incident happened. What did the police tell you? 
it was literally the same guy that was called earlier for the noise complaint, so he didn't really do anything. Okay, graffiti spray painted on the cake, um, fence, KKK, tenants claim they feel neighbors have been discriminating against them. All right, let me explain a couple of things, okay? I find that somebody spray painting something like that, I would find that incredibly offensive. I would feel incredibly insulted, and I would not want to live there. That is a separate issue from me deciding whether you get to just break your lease and not pay any of the money that you owe. Having said that, you are very clear on September 15th that they were leaving at the end of the month. This whole, oh, they'd left for weeks and I didn't know and all that other stuff. By September 15th, what efforts did you make to re-rent the place? I, I was trying to find a new tenant. But and you didn't? I didn't. Coming up on Justice for the People. You are suing for is something that you kind of already have because you already have their security deposit. Can you put those papers down, please? Do we have a problem? And later... I leave a voicemail message for Alex letting him know that the show is still on for August 5th, it's still going to happen, and I do expect him to be there. And then what happens? He doesn't show. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Lincoln Novak, who brought Chase Abney and Letitia Jenkins to court for unpaid rent. Now, did you, when this happened, I know you made the decision, I don't feel safe here, I'm leaving, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you other things that you could have done. You could have told the guy that you're leasing the place from, I expect you to put some uh, cameras out here. I, you know, I don't feel safe and I want to know who's been doing this. I've called it into the police and I want you to speak to the neighbors. I, uh, you know, what, something, you know, because it's one thing, don't roll your eyes at me, I'm looking at you, I'm looking right at you. You know I'm looking right at you. You know that, right? You understand that it is not me belittling what you went through, it's me having to call it I call the balls and the strikes. You understand that, right? He didn't spray paint that on your... He didn't do that, but that's who you expect to eat $4,500. Why? What did he do wrong? What did he do wrong? Right, well, the, the problem is no, that... What did he do wrong? Don't whine to me that you to feel... No, wait, 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 when we, wait, when we wait, him to help wait. Us. Tell me what he did wrong. At the very least, with the security deposit, like, he didn't offer to... By like clean the fence or maintain the property. Well, that's because basement. you didn't give him a chance. First of all, in the email that you sent to him, you don't send him the police report. You don't tell him about the fence. So how is he supposed to know if you don't tell him? Was that a phone he call? He found out by the email? neighbor telling him it after you been, guys had left. It could have been a phone call that we we talked to him about the KKK. And that it could have been or it was, my dear. It could have been or it was. Because you're in court and you're under oath. Which is it? All right, did you call? Did you call him? Yeah, I called him. Because I, yeah. I was at work, so. So therefore, you got a call. You got a call N that. Did you ever get a call from him, or did you find out by the neighbor? Stop I, talking to him directly. No, I, did you I, ever I, get a call from him, I, or did you I find. Don't, I don't recall this. Of okay. course you don't. Why would you deny something like that? Yes, you did. He, he called you. Look, okay? it's, it's not my responsibility for things you've You're done. You're our landlord. No. You were our He's landlord. He's your landlord! He is not. Your dad or the principal of the school you attend, he is your landlord. It doesn't matter. You have one obligation to him and he has one obligation to you. Okay? So you tell me what he did wrong. There are obligations that the landlord has to you. And there none of them are things that he broke. He didn't break an obligation to you. He didn't. Okay? That doesn't mean that I disagree with you moving. Move all you want. But then we have to discuss this because he didn't do something wrong that would mean he has to eat $4,500. Now, when you sue for $4,500, you're already off because you already have $1,500. That's true. So that means what you're out is $3,000. And this is ridiculous. So basically, what you are suing for is something that you kind of already have because you already have their security deposit. Can you put those papers down, please? Do we have a problem? I am not happy with what's going on right okay, now. Okay, you can I, go ahead and like go ahead and real, you can step hold outside. On, let me say what go I'm ahead. Say. No, you I already like said no, no, no. I'm not going to tolerate you disrespecting right the court. You're, you're going to have to go situation. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Go with step my bailiff, way, please. please. You can go step with her way, or you cannot go with her. It's up to you. This is frustrating.
she's probably going to be mad you didn't go with her. But we're going to wrap this up, okay? Okay, Your Honor. I think it's horrible what happened, okay? I don't even disagree that you move out. I have a different issue to decide, and that's whether or not he did something wrong. You say he did something wrong because he didn't fix your problem. That is not his job as a landlord. His job as a landlord is to let you rent the place for a certain amount of money and keep it in correct repair. A crime was committed against you. That's called criminal mischief. That would not allow you to break a lease. That doesn't just let you break a lease. You then are in a position to tell your landlord, we feel violated, I would like cameras out there, I need more security, and then he has a, a chance to say yes or no, I'm gonna spend the money, I'm not gonna spend the money. None of that happened. What happened is you send him an email, now you're telling me, yeah, we must have called him. He denies that you called him. I don't know whether you called him or not. It doesn't matter. Here is what I find. I find that you did not have a right to break the lease over this because he did not fail. And, and, and please do not misunderstand this with me being insensitive to the horror of this. I am not insensitive to the horror of this. It's just that I gotta take it out on the right person. You understand? I can't just take it out on, on him because he owns a place. Do you get it? You get it, right? Yes, okay. yes Your Honor. But having said that, even though they don't have a right to break the lease, you don't have a right to sit back for three months. You don't. You have to do something to mitigate your damages, and you did zero. I find that you're entitled to a month's rent, and that's understanding. That gives you a month and a half to re-rent the place because he tells you in an email September 15th he's leaving. He's already paid September, so you had until the end of October to find somebody, and you did zero to find somebody. So I am going to allow you to keep the security deposit for that one month, which you already have, but you're not going to get an additional 4500 certainly, but you're also not going to get an additional 3000 3,000 either, because you did nothing to mitigate your damages, and that is the responsibility of a landlord in these types of cases. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. All rise. Judge Melian has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The co-defendants have been ordered to forfeit their security deposit. <sighs> I'm not really happy with the outcome. I, I respect the ruling. I, I wish that more could have been done for my girlfriend's damages and insecurity about our living place. Coming up. But you booked another gig. Yes. Yes, I booked another gig that had much more opportunity for me than what I believed his would for Except me. for that you were already committed. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. Stephen Cox claims a performer he hired was a no-show, so he deserves his money back. Alex Reed says he took another gig, but only after the plaintiff told him the show might be canceled. Okay, Mr. Cox, you are suing Mr. Reed for $300, a deposit that you gave him that you believe he should return to you. Tell me what happened. I am a promoter. I'm okay. a promoter specifically out in New York City. I've been doing this for 10 years. I have okay. a great reputation of finding and promoting talent, giving individuals like a young man like Alex an opportunity to get up and go out and showcase what he does best. Okay. So we agree upon $600 overall. I give him a deposit of $300. And the specific date was going to be when? So August 5th is the date of the show. All right. And then what happens? So apparently the club, the place where we're going to have the actual venue on August 5th, contacts me and says there's some kind of plumbing issue. Now, I'm a good communicator. So I reach out to Alex and I tell him, hey, Alex, listen, the show might get pushed back, might get pushed back. So he understands that, and ultimately, we wait. So the club was able to solve these plumbing issues, and I contact him on the 26th. I leave a voicemail message for Alex, letting him know that the show is still on for August 5th, it's still gonna happen, and I do expect him to be there. And then what happens? He doesn't show. He tells me he's not gonna honor the deal. Disappointingly enough, he says he booked another show. Okay. Um, let me hear from you, Mr. Reed. Thank you, Judge. My name is Alex Reed. <clears throat> I'm from Detroit. I met Stephen here. Uh, we sat down. We had a short meeting where we agreed on August 5th I would come perform for him. We signed a contract for 300 on the spot, 300 after my show was done. And two weeks later, he calls to inform me that there was a plumbing issue, pipe burst or something at his venue, so this show has a possibility of being pushed back. He'll keep me informed. Coming up. Because in his contract that he gave me, it states 
that if the, if the promoter is to change the date of the show within But he 30 didn't change the date of the show. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. We're back with the case of Stephen Cox, who blames performer Alex Reed for not showing up to a gig. All right, we're, we're all still on target. And then he calls you and he says to you that there's a chance the date will be pushed forward. He doesn't say to you it's canceled. He does not say that it's canceled. He says we are basically on hold for this venue. And that was around July 6th. Okay. Now, after that, I still am performing. He says he's going to keep you posted, right? Correct. He says he's going to keep me posted. Right. So he does not post to you that it's canceled. Correct. He, he, he never says wants... they're looking to see if, I just wanted to give you a heads up, they're looking to see if they can fix it in time, which means that there's a possibility they can fix it in time. Correct. But you booked another gig. Yes. Yes, I booked another gig that had much more opportunity for me than what I believed his would for Except me. for that you were already committed. But so before you book this better opportunity for you, mm -hmm. why don't you at a minimum have the decency to text him and say, hey, what's up? Because I have another opportunity and I don't want to miss it. That's where I did. I did, Your Honor. I'm sorry. You yes. did what? I did. I called him. Before accepting this other job, I actually had the decency to call Stephen here, which he didn't answer. I called him did again. Did he call you? Your Honor, um, as a promoter, I received lots of phone calls. I did not receive any kind of messages. Did he leave a message? Nothing. Did he text you? Nothing. Did, uh, have you communicated through text in the past? No. H how have you communicated in the past? We have always called each other. Okay, so according to you, you called him, and what? I asked him if there was any update. You have all these reasons, and yes. then you actually keep his $300, which is all the man is suing for. Yes. Right. Because in his contract that he gave me, it states that if the, if the promoter is to change the date of the show within But he didn't change the date of the show. Judge Millian's verdict when justice for the people returns. This is Justice for the People with Judge Millian. The man never told you it was canceled. He said he'd keep you posted. And then you call him, he doesn't answer you back, and then boom, you just book another show? Yeah. I'm, and then you don't return his $300 because it's bad enough that you take another gig, but it's not as though he's suing you because for his lost profits that night or something. All he wants is the measly $300 he paid you back. And your answer for that is no, because it's not refundable. Yeah, except for in one circumstance where you breach, which is what happened here. You're the guy who breached by taking another job without knowing for sure whether the thing was canceled or not. You were committed to that date and, and that venue with this person. You may be very talented, but you need to learn about business. This is super bad business. $300 verdict for the plaintiff. Judge Millian has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant owes $300. You're an amazing talent, but what you're not exactly good at, what you're still novice at, is understanding how this business works. We signed a contract, honor it, and you'll definitely go far. Thanks. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.